Alright, so we're back with uh, Reverse 1999. Uh, we have one event that's ending in like uh, less than an hour. So we're gonna try to finish that one. So it's the backstory of Oliver Fogg. So, Prison of Fog. Part one. Is there, see, is there a voice acting or do I read everything? I can't remember when it was that I began to hate the fog. The city, wherever shrouded in fog, prompt to overall comparison between this endless struggle and our own. The fog that covers this absurdity and unsightliness is just is like a bell jar, appealing a cricket. Beyond those invisible, intangible borders lies the jury face of the gods. They drain every ounce of vitality from the credit kit, dispatching the fog as mo most faithful instrument. And so, the cricket turns its head to find the thick fog everywhere. Up, down, left, right, all around. No escape in sight. No peripheral boundaries. Even its cry would be lost in the fog. That fog, as vicious as snot. Flowing from a running nose, envelops the cricket to the point where the poor wretch couldn't even make a sound, and rubbed its wings in vain, attempting to make its slightest noise. But the only thing that filled the air was a fog and a silent ridicule. To this day, no one has responded to its plea. In this thick fog, there is only silence. The silence of death. What does that's what it does, this fog. It invariably forces the individual to face the certainty of their own demise. Walking in this endless fog, with no end in sight, surrounded by the cage of untouchable wires, where even the most treasure strikes have no means of finding the target. The only thing only one wait, the only thing one is allowed to feel is extreme loneliness, and that deadly still. We, walking through this dense fog for the sake of our own so-called mission, might possibly be the most pitiful cricket of all. How long has it been since I last saw the sun? Oliver Fogg? Um... Oh, sorry Miss Fairton. I lost myself for a moment there. What were you talking about just now? Okay. Then... Now we hope you will aid our cause two days from now. With the enemy well hidden within the fog, determining the location was no easy feat. It looks like we'll be counting on you and your archive skills to succeed. <sighs> the day after tomorrow. That's a holiday, isn't it? Yes. It is indeed. Before I offer you my response, Miss Fairton, allow me to ask a question. Who was it that proposed I join you in the operation of yours? Uh, it was Mr. Knight. And will he also be taking part? No. Mr. Knight will not be taking part in this operation, but he recommended you wholeheartedly. <laughs> You do know that he's egging me on by passing this work to me. It's quite evident, Miss Fairton. I'll get it sorted soon. Miss Fairton, I intend to direct a formal complaint towards Mr. Knight. Allow me to co come straight to the point, Miss Fairton. I will be more than willing to help you in any way, merely due to the goodwill we have fostered through the course of our acquaintance. However, my principle will not permit me to sacrifice my hard-earned time off merely for the convenience of others. I will provide you with any advice you may require, but my practical assistance is uh, out of the question. <sighs> so then, this is your la latest experiment in reformist theoric refusal? Mm -hmm. Not at all. It's a matter of Prevero that has been used since, since Chamberlain's days. It's fine. Look, I won't try to force you, Oliver. I'm only here to discuss the matter with you. All right. Then I thank you for your understanding, Miss Fairton. If there's nothing else, I will... I can help you with. I will take my leave. There's work I yet, I've yet to finish today. Someone is reminded of some things in the past. What someone is about to recount to you is a sworn testament to the face-to-face -face run-in with the dark spirit, a bloodthirsty creature of undead. Someone accounted as Sirius Knight long, long ago. Brilliant. I love the story. I mean, Miss Sotheby knows she's definitely going to love the story. 
Someone came across a long abandoned castle with a close friend while journeying the countryside one dark night. <laughs> the forest around the castle was a mere shroud and airy mist, and someone was transparent right through it. Boots trapping on rotten leaves and kicking up the most vile, putrid stink of rancid soil mixed with the damp stench of decay. But our destination was not far off. We had almost reached the castle gates. Suddenly, someone in that faithful friend spots a shadowy figure up ahead. He was slumped asleep against a tree, assuming unconsciousness. <laughs> Back then, uh, mm. someone was still a simple minded knight. Someone stepped forward and went headily over to the side of the mysterious figure. Just as everyone leaned in closer, listening ever more intently to the knight's story, another figure passes by. I'll get it sorted soon. I can confirm that there's no problems with the work plan. Everything seems to be in order. The schedule is a little tight, but we will proceed accordingly. We can finish all work on time today. Someone tapped him on the shoulder, but he didn't budge an inch. Then, someone tapped him again. He suddenly lifted his head to reveal a ghastly, disgusting face with black holes where his eyes should have been. What? <gasps> Miss Hunterby knows. I got it! Must have been the Trooper Cobra. <laughs> Only the truth were so simple. As soon as we saw the living corpse, someone and someone's good friend knew right away. In the depths of the castle lay the terrifying, treacherous, blood curing banshee. Uh. An evil spirit? What is the price? One of the spirits Miss Sutterby has met has been most cordial to her. Though to be fair, I have never had the misfortune of meeting a thirsty one before. I am clear. That's a good point. It might be a bit of a quirky sign. Little guys and click are good souls. Oh, so wait, so those are actually <sighs> spirits? I didn't know what click was uh, kind of dead. <sighs> Excuse me, please. Some of us have to work to do. Oh, this way, please. From my side, over here. Mr. Fogg, Mr. Knight was telling. Mr. Fogg, Mr. Knight was telling us about his adventures just now. In fact, he was right in the middle of an interesting story when you came in. Would you like to stay a while and listen with us? I'll pass on the ghost stories. I am very busy. However, I must. I feel I must caution you, ladies. Huh? Huh? <sighs> there is this people in the world whose mouths are incapable of speaking the truth. Not only do they spin their yarn, boosting about what has never truly transpired, that, but they may have even shrink their responsibility and force miners to carry out their work for them. Someone doesn't even have a mouth, although someone has a wondering for some time now. How does someone even speak without anything with which to speak out of? <sighs> Through the magic of your archive skill. I knew this was going to happen. Huh? Timekeeper, you came to visit too? Did something happen to Mr. Fogg today? He appears to be quite in a foul mood. I don't think he's very happy about having to work outside his schedule. I see. The rest day. Part two. Hmm. All this because Mr. Knight proposed a mission plan that requires working through his days off. Uh. Does Mr. Fogg really hate this, his work that much? If really does it like your job, then why not quit? Hmm. To be honest with you, I have never understood the way Oliver Fogg thinks. Maybe he's dealing with issues that he's not able to really share. Timekeeper, perhaps you might try negotiating between Mr. Fogg and Mr. Knight? No. No. It's best we let those two of them sort this out on their own. I believe Mr. Knight will find a way to figure this out. <sighs> it goes without saying that you didn't have labor laws in your era. Naturally, this sort of modern dollars was neither fitting for someone's Sarah nor for the professional of a knight. <laughs> Sir Knight, time has changed. We have no need for knights in our time. What we do need is an eight hour work day and no maintained overtime on holidays or weekends. Oliver, you seem to forget this era is a state of decline. But surely even our presence declines will not regress us back to a time without labor rights and holidays, right? <sighs> we all need to adapt to the changing of times, Mr. Knight. Yes. Too true. Someone needs to learn to adapt to the times. This is why someone has always wanted to change into armor. Someone might consider it to be more in keeping with the times. In more dazzling color, perhaps 
By the way, do you think Pink would suit someone at all? Honestly, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> then how about uh, stickers? Mm -hmm. Someone heard Mr. Re Mr. Reeves says that someone could receive complimentary stickers upon purchasing baked goods from the market. Someone happens to be quite interested in these stickers. Imagine sticking them on someone's sword and armor. How splendid would that be? However, someone clearly lacks the ability to consume such a copious quantity of baked goods alone, or indeed at all. Therefore, someone hopes to entrust this task of devouring this business. Suffice of biscuits to you on someone's behalf. Biscuits? Really? <laughs> don't change the subject. I won't be bribed by your biscuits, and I expect my compliment complaints to be taken seriously, Mr. Knight. Someone hears and obeys. Oh, um, sorry. Someone's listening, Oliver. What is it that you are complaining about? I don't work overtime. Mr. Knight, I am but a child, yet I am forced to work, and as such, you must respect the few holidays I have. I would ask you to please refrain from making suggestions to Miss Fenton that may lead to my my being forced to work overtime. Holidays? Ah, it seems someone might not be so well adapted to these times just yet. After all, when it comes to a night and the things and it's one's duty to do, there are no holidays. I don't work overtime. If you want to work overtime, that's your business, Mr. Knight. I, however, have always refused any unreasonable request to work overtime, especially during holidays. Someone hears and obeys. Someone understands what you mean, Oliver. Someone who tries to respect your rights. Hmm? Good to see my complaints wasn't a complete waste of time. Oliver Fogg pulls out his pocket watch once more. Glancing over the time as it were to appear casual. Then he freezes in place like a carbuncle, eagerly emptying cans, only to find its secretly stashed dust gone without a trace. Hmm. What's wrong, Oliver? You seem somewhat distressed. Forgive someone for asking. <laughs> My plan is in tatters now. What? My work plan is a mess. There's not enough time to finish all my tasks. Is it because someone has taken up so much of your time with this issue of yours? Huh. Your continuous interruptions certainly have not helped. <sighs> I never expected my record of not working overtime for 211 days straight to end today. <laughs> it's just uh, someone of harassment, mm. but where were you being assigned to work today? Um. You forced in a box. I need to ensure we retain a good vantage point there, so that if the box was attacked, we can react in a timely fashion. Hmm. Is there someone you'd like to ask me? No, no, of course not. Only a caution, Mr. Fogg, that the forest isn't safe that night. It would be better to head back early. All right. Thanks for your concern, but my work takes persistence. I can fend for myself. Someone has heard that no one goes to for that forest at night. Therefore, if you complete your work and clear the fog, it may not necessarily be of any use. <laughs> Mr. Knight, do you believe that the work of the four walkers, fog walkers, is to throw the fog to keep it at bay? Someone has always believed this to be the case. Is there some flaw in someone's understanding? <sighs> the true responsibility of the fog walkers is to make sure that people believe that the fog is under control. As long as there is a fog walker, people will believe that the fog is being dealt with. No one cares about how much fog a fog walker can absorb, how it all works, or how, what a fog walker's purpose really is. Making people believe that the fog is under control is the fog worker's true responsibility. Mm. Based on this principle, I must ensure that my working hours align solely with my duty as a fog walker. Someone has just thought up the perfect word to describe you. I know what you're trying to say. In this kind of situation, we commonly refer to such people as bureaucrats or pencil pushers that do their duties to the letter of the law and nothing more. However, to a civil service like myself, this term may be so form of praise. Farewell, Mr. Knight. I must leave now. If there if I have any hope to finish my work today. Sorry, Miss Sorry, Mr. Knight. Someone does not see any reason for you to apologize, Miss Fairton. But didn't you tell him? I haven't had the chance to tell him. So that's what I happened. See, Miss Fairton, someone has suddenly remembered another urgent matter someone must attend to. For now, I must bid you adieu. As you wish. Hmm? Uh, what Mr. happened? Knight, won't you tell us the rest of the story? Sorry, everyone. Everyone has an urgent matter to deal with and must leave immediately. Please forgive my uncouth and abrupt departure. Thank you. 
Oh, is that for now? Thank you for sharing this wonderful story, Mr. Knight. To be continued. Okay. Dad joke. Um. Well, that's everything done, more or less. Let me check my work schedule. All right. Good. Then I can check Hawk off now. It's not that noticeable during the daytime, but as soon as night falls, this forest becomes extremely quiet. <sighs> hmm, I hate places that are just silent. It reminds me of the fog I had to immerse myself in almost daily, where every, even my shouts and cries for help were swallowed up by the beloved fog. Wow. Hmm? What's this? It's too dark to see clearly. Critters, and they're attacking. <laughs> there's even more than them than I feared. And there's no kind of natural search around. If I say put, they'll eventually surround me. Unfortunately, that I absorbed quite a bit of fog while working this afternoon. It should be still be usable. <laughs> uh, so this is my reward for all that hard work. No, I shouldn't think like that. But work is the reason I ended up in this mess. It looks like there are fewer enemies in that direction. I think I might just break through that way. A dense fog pours out from his umbrella, quickly enveloping the surrounding areas. <sighs> Phew, that was a natural escape, all thanks to the fog. At last, it seems there aren't many critters around here. It's too dark now, but with the fog, I couldn't even make out what kind of critters were attacking me. All right. I need to rest for a bit now. I'll figure out how to get out of here once I catch my breath. <laughs> uh, Fogwalker, mm. are you alright, my young friend? Hmm? Are you truly surprised to see someone here, Fogwalker? Mr. Knight, did you take me as a duel... Delahan? Or else, what other vile things did you see as to, like, the reaction of seeing someone else here? <sighs> I thank you for asking the new surprise instead of panic regarding my reaction. I have no interest in shaming your reaction, Fogwalker. Well then, Mr. Knight, what brings you here? Someone has a sudden impulse to play the part of the stone in the forest. See? Someone's disguise is quite perfect. If it's not, even your keen eyes fail to detect someone's presence amongst the moss and trees. Don't you think it would be have, have been even stronger if I managed to notice you there? Hmm. Because the night is so dark? <laughs> Mr. Knight, this kind of ban banal joke is what we call refers to as a dag joke. I have heard the line as terrible as that since my father passed, and I'd rather I never heard such a thing again. Please forgive me. Someone didn't need to stir up memories from your past. Someone deeply regrets having upset you, so... Come on, it was a long time ago. I don't really care about it anymore. Anyway, hmm. in that case, perhaps, perhaps... Forgive someone for asking. You might tell someone more about your father, someone quite interested in the previous Fogwalker. You want me to tell you about my father? <sighs> I'd rather not. I can't think of a single thing worth mentioning about him. He was an ordinary man and, a, and the most ordinary fog walker. A fog walker who died in a fog. And a failure of a father. He only ever spent any time with his mother and me. Every single day, if he wasn't busy working, he was studying the Archon. And it was only when discussing Arcanism that he would display a demeanor alike to Arcanus. <laughs> He spent his whole life studying and striving to push the arcane teaching technique of the Fog family forward, hoping to adapt them to the fog we now face in the modern era. But ultimately, it led him to his demise. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? I can scarcely remember what he looked like anymore. The only thing about him that left any sort of lasting impression on me were those few dag jokes he made around the dinner table. Terrible, tinnitus jokes. But he was a fog walker. And there was only one fogger in all of London. People have attached a great deal of importance to the title Fogwalker, but in all my options, the fogger is not much different from a manure scooper. Devoting yourself or even sacrificing yourself for the sake of your so-called responsibilities. There is nothing more foolish in the entire world. <laughs> I never lived my life to the way my father did. 
He was bound by the title Fog Walker. But I won't let that happen to me. You admire your faith freely. Someone can feel it. Um. I do not. <sighs> when I was a child, I wanted to be a Fog Walker too, so yes. I mean, then I admire my father greatly. But things were different now. It's only because he used to. Critters even catch up with me. Dark shadows rush out from the depths of the forest, encircling the area before there's time to react. Yet more shadows emerge from the forest depths, like smoke spewing from the chimney factory. Wait, the factory chimney. Thick and relentless. It appears we found ourselves in some more predicament. don't seem to be in the habit of wearing gas masks. Merci. Just as a I lost the order. Ah! Cheer up. Ah, it's illegal. Nice move. Bravo. Just in time. Never hesitate. Merci. Just as planned. Never hesitate. Umbrella and umbrella. It's illegal. Brave. Merci. Never hesitate. Three hours, fifteen minutes left. <laughs> No, nothing. All right, come on. Got left at de almost 30 minutes left. <clears throat> I'm afraid of the fog. That's right. The fog we're responsible for dealing with London's fog problem is in fact terrified by it. Is there anything in the world more erotic than that? I'm afraid of this thick fog that bars everything. Voices, wishes, fate. Even that magician figure ended up being swallowed whole by the fog. That was when I was a child, before I became a fog walker. My mother turned her head for only a second, and I stuck out of the house. I wanted to embark on a great journey, and my destination was Highbury Stadium. Arsenic was the best team in London at the time, and every child in London dreamed of becoming a player. I was no exception. I wanted to go there, to Highbury Stadium, Enjoyed the team. I was fantasizing about running around Hallbury in a full arsenal kit, imitating the movements of the players, completely oblivious to the fact that I was delivered by my path. That was when the fog came. First, it did and most invisible mist began to surface the air. It was like a clever thief dealing all sense of directions and selling, setting me on the wrong path. Then another wave of thick fog came rushing through and that completely astern my view. With a crooked smile, it set me apart from my dreams and told me that I would never go anywhere ever again and would remain in a dense fog for my whole life. Finally, a dreadful, clinging, sticking dark fog arrived. It destroyed the last remaining silver of my courage, it imprisoned me where I stood, leaving me unable to move so that all I could do was stand there, crying and praying. Yet, no matter how much I cried, my voice couldn't penetrate through the dense and cleansing air. I destroyed my dreams and my courage. At the last, it stripped me of my fragile rights as human. The fog gradually turned black from end to end. It saw to rob this cage I was in and its last remaining light. It wanted me to fear it, to fear it as though it was fear itself. The pitch black, brutal fog hung just as the way it does now. Hmm? Why are there so many critters? Something entirely wrong here. <laughs> Someone uh, did tell you that mm. this forest is not safe at night, Mr. Fog. The fog.
Bob Walker paused for a moment. Then he came to a sudden realization. So that's why you're here. You came to protect me. No, of course not. Someone simply came here to play the part of a talking tree. I caused you nothing but trouble, Mr. Knight. Please accept my apologies. My stubbornness dragged you into this mess, and I feel just awful about it. You're the second person to apologize to someone today, and someone's response is still the same. There's no need to apologize, Mr. Sir Oliver. I've never seen this many critters before in my life. It's beyond me. The sink mass of shadows piles together, shrouding the two of them. Critters covers every inch of the ground, a meter away from them in all directions, trapping the two of them where it stands. Hmm. Are you trembling, Mr. Oliver? They're just like that coin black fog, a wicked pitch black mass that seems to the end, no end. Fog, a heavy dense fog, a terrifying fog that almost of which not even sight can permeate. Hmm. Are you afraid, sir? Will you show Forgive fear to someone the enemies standing for before asking. you? <sighs> Anyone would be afraid to face that many en enemies at once. <laughs> Countless critters folded around the two of them, blending into a dark forest, making it impossible to distinguish their type as they approach. The swamp seemed endless, merging from the nestlings from the desert forest, expanding and filling the space around them. But for some unknown reason, they refrained from launching their attack. Instead, they simply form forming an ever tickling ring. Someone ah. is reminded of some things. This reminds in the past. someone of the battle someone once stood in mere moments before being slain in combat. <laughs> uh, so surrounded by an equally large number of enemies. Then, no. Indeed, take heart. We were perhaps a dozen times more than this. Mr. Knight, it's all because of me that you've been put in that you have put your life in danger once more. I'll get it sorted I'll soon. I'll take full responsibility for my actions. Good sir, and I shall do everything I can to help you escape. The young man takes a deep breath and opens his umbrella once more, preparing to take on the endless mist darkness. However, his trembling hands and legs betray him. There's simply no way we can handle this many enemies. <sighs> Only thing I can take solace in now is the fact that at least Miss Wretched was aware of my intentions. Now all we can do is pray that Miss Wretched realize that two of us are missing and come looking for us. A fogwalker voice trembles slightly. Someone is reminded of some things ah, in the past. Someone has reminded something about her feeling. Someone once had a close friend with the exact same name as your own. That man used to be one which someone often called someone through countless challenges of his friend sharing both glory and suffering together. Back in those days, someone was but a reckless boy, but thanks to that friend, someone was able to grow into a true and worthy knight. He saved someone's life several times too, even though someone dragged him into troubles on countless occasions. When someone looked back on it now, someone cannot help but feel remorseful. Sorry, this rusty old armor is full of useless memories from long ago. You and someone's old covenant are indeed very familiar. Every time someone sees you, someone can't help but think of those adventures from a past life. Thou hast someone's admiration. He was an excellent, intelligent, and level-headed fellow just like you. Huh. Are you having a laugh at me? Someone compares his honor as a rhetorical device. It's far less sophisticated than the perfect prophecy officially you modern Britons seem to possess. Perhaps you should have learned to have more faith in yourself. Although you are just a child, and immature in many ways, one day, someone is sure you will also become a great knight like he was. Hmm? But I am no knight. Somebody reminds you, saying only this morning that knights were nothing in the past. Perhaps your music holds some truth? However, someone believes that the spirit of Superly must never die. And you truly do have the spark of potential to be a knight. It's a nice sentiment, but I'll never be an ultimate player or a knight. Being a fog worker is my sole calling. <sighs> Just like my father, his father before him, and his father before him, as the faith of all the fogs. All my hopes and dreams are trapped, never to be set free, trapped in that unconquerable fog. Unconquerable, huh? There is nothing in this world that is truly unconquerable, Oliver. <laughs> that notion certainly is pleasing to hear at the moment. But if things were that way you said they were, why would you? Sorry, I let my emotions get the better of me. This may be the end, but it's not the end of us, Oliver. How about someone tell you the story of Oliver in the kind of we are bravely speaking about your father? Someone's closest friend, 
the story of Oliver, the knight. Um, what happened to him? I apologize, sir knight. I was out with bonus questions. Hmm. He died. And it seems he was not as lucky as someone else. He was not granted the gift of returning to the world, born into a new identity. But he never truly died. Merci. Just as well. Fight for the unarmed. Never hesitate. Hold your breath. Ah, it's illegal. Please, hold your breath. Just in time. Just take it as a trip to London. Cheer up. Merci. Ha! The sword is drawn. Considering someone's physical condition. Serves with Oliver in our league army, and it was during one particular fortress that we were ambushed by the enemy. To cover the retreat of our main force, someone along with Oliver took out a duty of forming the rear guard. Our enemies were re regions, and there were but 12 of us. We had to fight without rest to buy time for the utter retreat. For a night, Oliver was much, not much of a fighter. He was always used the better talent of his mind and the elegance with words to accomplish his ends. Ha! You could even say his method was very much the opposite of someone's own at the time. Nevertheless, Oliver fought with fear or hesitation in order to protect someone who blocked dungeons of attack through the course of the battle. Someone witnessed him fight to the very end with some, some, someone's own eyes. And even at the bitter end, someone found himself receiving his dead full protection. Someone still remembers the saying vividly. He, lo he lulled peace and glory, calmly accepted his fate, and fought until the end. Someone's resistance with Sir Oliver ended in our deaths. Though we fought tooth and nail, we could not defeat the overwhelming strength of our greater thousands of men set against us. But we succeeded in our mission. We successfully, we successfully held the enemy long enough for our main forces to retreat to safety. In view of this outcome, the sacrifice someone made, along with the sacrifice of all who stood beside us, was well worth it. Someone sometimes wonders why someone was the only knight resurrected from a fateful battle. Someone has even asked if God knew someone who had witnessed the death of eleven braver souls that day, why still the lesser one was alone brought back. Thou hast someone's admiration. Upon reaching this line of thinking, someone felt new purpose. Someone is no longer simply living for oneself. Someone witnessed their last moments, thus someone's duty bound to preserve the glory of their name and their achievements in the world. Hmm? I don't understand. I don't understand why you're doing any of this. Why wouldn't you fight on, knowing full well that you stood no chance of survival? Maybe it was such a clear understanding of your inevitable fate, seeing clearly that death was the only ending available to you. Death is like walking into the invisible fog, no end in sight, no boundaries to reach, and no, but signs to hear, to speak, no matter how loudly you wish to scream. <sighs> I don't quite understand how you could walk all into that fog so calmly. Huh. Just like... Just like my foolish father. Hmm. Foolish? Perhaps so. However, Alavi, some things are more important than one's life. This is our duty, our responsibility. I heard enough. Huh. 
You turn your sacrifice and responsibility into virtue, and then march proudly into that fog. Um. Did you ever stop to consider what those that stand outside the fog have to go through? I hate you all. I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm just a boy, but because we have dreamed up notions of purpose and responsibilities, I was forced to become a fog walker. I never wanted to walk among the fogs. I'm terrified of it. I just want to... I want to stay alive. To fear death is nothing, never something to be ashamed of, Oliver. But if death was the only way we can achieve something greater than ourselves, we must bear it with honor. Um... Something greater? The suit of armor doesn't answer. He slowly draws his longsword, which he has purposely thrust into the ground. It feels as if at this moment now passed to, had they forgotten that they're still surrounded by critters. Like the endless midnight fog, the terrifying critters encircle us like a rushing tide. Take thy sword, a duel with someone fair and square. Yes, Merci. Step it up, everyone. Never hesitate. Rest in song. Ha! Hold your breath. Ha! It's illegal. Merci. Brave. Fight for the unarmed. Move. Follow the Merci. His trumpets sound. <clears throat> the judgment day has come. Ha! Um, what's going on here? Are these critters afraid? Suddenly, the old suit of armor lifted his long sword. And the dazzling ball of light began to bloom from it. Thou hast someone's someone has admiration. Someone has seen this before. Someone has seen the light that can never be forgotten. The light that bestows upon the courage of fate. Don't forget this light. Let it burn into our memories, Oliver. The suit of armor swung the long sword in his hands with renewed strength, bringing it to bear as he had before. His trumpet sound. Judgment Day has come. Nice, it was even two of them, huh? Brave. Brilliant. Ha! Umbrella and a Hold your breath. Merci. Just take it as a trip to London. Never hesitate. Dang, dang. Brave. Merci. Three hours, 15 minutes left. <laughs> no. The burning slice exploded in a sorry burst, piercing through the black fog like burning rays of sunlight through shadow. And the black fog, which seems spongeless and invincible, revealed itself to be more cowardly than a trembling mouse. It retreats, no, it surrenders to the light. Wherever the light touches, the fog burns away, leaving only the bodies of critters behind. All that could be seen in that forest was the light of the sword, blazing like the dawn. Only then did I realize the number of critters surrounding us to be far less than I imagined. They were afraid of us and hadn't had the nerve to launch an offensive. The night and the fog has only mentioned our own fear. I shrouded the monster again in a thick blanket of fog and fled without having to lift a finger to fight them. Then, that cold steel armor rested gently on my shoulder, with a motion resumed of my father before he left. Hope is greater, Oliver. Life from his sword 
was the sunlight piercing through the fog of my memories. I suddenly remember. I remember why I wanted to be a, a fog walker. I had strayed from the main road and wandered into the fog. I wept, but the thick fog swallowed my plea for help. All that I felt was fear. The black fog enveloped me, almost devouring me. Just as I reached for my limit, a magician figure stood out from the depths of the fog, holding a huge black umbrella and wearing a top hat from another time. He approached me with steadily composed steps. The hopeless black fog howled desperately struggling to tell to flee from his presence. But to no avail, no one was better than dealing with the dreadful black fog than he. He walked towards me with purpose, with warmth, hopeful, sunlight rising from within him, penetrating the depths of the fog and casting his light over me. This magnificent figure arrives at my side and gently places his hand on my shoulder. Oliver, let's go home. So is this dead? He spoke to me softly. At this moment, I finally understand what it meant to be a fog walker. The fog walker is the one who steps into the fog and brings light to other. Fundamentally, it's a job like any other. Moldine and Sandlin screws are a scooping maneuver. But that's not all it is. My father once walked through the fog to bring me hope. On that day, he did the same. This is my responsibility and is our responsibility. The hand that gently rested on my shoulder withdrew in silence. He donned his top hat again and stepped back into the fog. The same vigor of fog that would draw him hold. In the same way, he found me in the fog and brought me hope. On that day, in 1952, he also brought hope to the people of London. The hope was survival. I found myself weeping, the tears falling beyond my control. Excellent work. Oliver, let's go home. Some days in the future, will I be able to bring hope to the world just like you and my father? Hmm. Yes. Someone firmly believes that the day will come. Or have you already forgotten someone told you of your potential as a knight? one for Oliver Fogg. Part 7. Time off for Lou. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Surgeon. Good morning, Mr. Fogg. Is there anything I can do for you, Mr. Fogg? Uh, not really. It's only that I remember something. What is it? Um, it's not really worth mentioning. It's just um, you're taking the on the title of well, Fog Walker. Hmm. Oh. Uh, pleasure. I mean, please, be so concerned yourself with that sort of thing. Actually, I came here for another reason. The day before yesterday, you mentioned an operation plan for today, one that requires my participation. Yes, I recall you refused it at the time. Uh, well. What I meant is, if you could constant me for the day off in some other way, then I might, well, that is for, to say, I'm like, impossible for me to, let's say, make an exception and take on another shift? Is that so? Well, the thing is, the matter has been resolved. Um. Resolved? To be precise, on the evening of our conversation, you and Mr. Knight appear to have worked together to resolve the issue. Wait, what? What? Wait, when? Wait, you mean those critters? Yes, we received word about the horde of critters in that forest known to attack humans. Those critters would usually hide in the forest fog during the day and only strike at night. Therefore, I had hoped that today, during the daytime, you could absorb the fog to help us lo locate the particular critter horde. And why not at night? I seem to recall you having school tomorrow, tonight. Ah, <sighs> uh, 
thank you, Miss Redton, for the so kind respecting my rights to education. Since you and Mr. Knight rarely handled the critters situation, there is no need for you to remain at work today. I can't help but feel something is amiss here. That's right. What about Mr. Knight? He told me he would be unable to participate in today's operation for some reason. But that night, he and I defeated those critters alone. Today, Mr. Knight had taken the day off. A day off? Correct. He told me he wished to spend the time paying tribute to his fallen brothers in arms. Men who chose to make the ultimate shakarites in order to hold your hopes to others. Miss Fairton. Hmm. <sighs> Although I hate the fog and the other fog moving just as much as I did before, I feel as though I understand them a little more. Perhaps there's nothing I can do to put an end of the fog of London. But if I evade my evade my responsibilities and do this like this, then I'll surely be dividing myself of that hope. I hope my father died trying to preserve. I'll get it sorted soon. Burton, I determined to clear the fog in London, not only as a fog lord, but as someone, as, as someone who has set the glorious light of the sun. I want to become someone who can clear the fog and bring hope to others. All right. To this end, I intend to study hard and secure a place at the University of Cambridge. And what motivated you to make this decision? I believe that compared to pursuing a life engaged in art alone, it would be better for me to become a cabinet secretary guiding our nation's politics and the formation of regulate of our nation's law. Miss hmm? Fairton, why are you looking at me so strangely? Is there something unseen flawed in my plans? No, Oliver, there's nothing wrong with it. Perhaps it's only that your plan is so fitting for you that I'm lost at words. Then I shall feel honored to have you approve of Miss Fairton. All right. By the way, I'll say goodbye now. I haven't finished my work for today just yet. Goodbye, Mr. Fogg. By the way, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Thank you, Miss Fairton. Oh yes, and please convey my gratitude, Mr. Knight, for me. Please tell him that perhaps I will never become a knight, but I will not res rest until I become myself. All of fraud, the Fog Walker of London. Is that the end of his story? And we got achievement. What's what's left anyway? Okay. Oh, eight minutes. Can we even finish in eight minutes? Stage. Eighteen. Thank you, Checker. Who is this? Yeah, I know. Merci. <laughs> oh, need me to get you guys in the seven waves. You still don't recognize me? What about now? Ah. We're gonna do some battle of battles. Do this. Bravo. What? You still don't recognize me? The sword now? is drawn. Dang, dang. Merci. Bravo. Fight for the unarmed. Dang, dang. Yeah, I do this. See this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Need me to get you guys an ambulance?
Merci. Brave. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no magic, nor any special kind of mechanic. Oh, yeah, see if I can uh, rush it up before the minutes in like what? Six, six minutes? Follow the will of gods. No worries. Who this is? His trumpet sound. The judgment day has come. Merci. Yes, I know. Fight for the unarmed. Merci. Fight for the unarmed. Considering someone's physical condition, the investiture can... All right, so that's all for today. I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough to finish it, uh, get all those points in that time frame. But uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out for today's stream. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.